Hello and welcome to the PM Show, your weekly roundup of what's new and going on in the PM world. How are we doing this morning, Matt? Or afternoon in this one, if we want to be totally honest. <laughs> hey, yeah, no, I'm very well, thank you. Yeah, all good. Yes, yes. We're a little bit later going up, so this might be a little bit later making it out to you as well, purely because I've had new internet and we've had no internet, so we're sorting all that out. But anyway, we are here, we are live, hopefully we've got no audio problems and we're all good. So, yes. Anyway, we've got lots to talk about this week. Uh, you sent me down these fantastic kits, which I'm going to do tomorrow, get them all reviewed. Okay, uh, yeah. So that they will be up with you over the next few days as well. And uh, so, yes, absolutely gorgeous. We talk about these in a little bit more depth. But it's nice to get my grubby little mitts on them. Really looking forward to having a look at that uh, 109. I know we spoke about it last week, but it does look stunning. Uh, looks really, really nice. And uh, obviously the uh, F4EJ, the Kai's, really nice as well. And the gorgeous new Wildcat. So it's nice to get those ones down in here. You've got actually what is to me, I have to be honest, probably the reason I do this job. All right, okay. Oh, that's a big statement. It is. If it wasn't for that kit, I don't think I would be here. I would probably have to get a job. Oh, God, no. Heaven forbid you have to get a proper job. <laughs> get a real job. <laughs> um, but, yes, yeah, so that is the ledger. Which one's that? Is that the PT6 kit? This is, yeah, PT6, yeah. Yeah, crikey, that means I am far too knowledgeable of it. Yeah. Um, so the thing was, that was the kit that was one of my first ever um, bits I put up on eBay back in the day. Then I started doing commissions, and it was my staple kit I used to put up. I, if you were around sort of late 90s on eBay, you would have seen some idiot putting up, you know, um, professionally built. <laughs> yeah. You were the first to say. Uh, yeah, that's it. Professionally built, scale model, completed, you know, and all the rest of it. And I, that was always my base kit. I had loads of them. And uh, they go together beautifully. They really, really go well. You always got that little thing with the intakes with those, but dry fitting them. And if you notice, here's a little thing for you. On the back of it, where it joins the actual rest of the intake, the engine area, that intake goes on. If you look, you'll see a line. And what it is, they change the mold for the top part of the intake, and it is slightly out of alignment. If you sand that flush, they fit no problem at all. If you don't, you'll have a tiny little seam in there, which either you go with and you go, it's fine, or you'll be bugged. And then as soon as you put fill in near it, you'll notice there's quite a lot of riveting detail in that area and you you yeah you've ruined it then yeah, yeah, but yeah. if you if you do, do know it you'll you will see it quite it's quite obvious now i've pointed out you it's one of those things you can't unsee but if you take care of it and just sand it off at the top you'll actually get a perfect join between the actual intakes and the rest of the fuselage apart from that it's actually a really really good kit it's one of i think hasegawa's best kits they ever did back in the 90s um, because it is and it's in the old randy cunningham markings which is wrong if you want a spoiler alert as well it's only as a couple of minute technicalities on the tail art of that one because it is slightly wrong, but you wouldn't know, trust me. Um, but it is, it's uh, really, it's been reboxed to death by them. Let's face it, it's been in hundreds of different markings as well. Uh, but yeah, it is the reason I am here. Without that kit, I can honestly say I don't think I'll be here. There so, so there mm. you go, folks. Big it statement is. from Mr. Floret. Would, yes. you, would you revisit it? I, absolutely. Page? In a heartbeat. Absolutely. I would. I will go back and I will definitely rebuild that kit because it is such an iconic kit and I have so many fond memories of it. What's great about that kit, and if people have been following me a long time, you'll know that famously I had a commission come in and um, there was a little bit of difficulty with it and they needed it within 48 hours. And I built that kit completely and then went right the way through the weekend. I started at 7 o'clock on a Friday, and I had it done by 7 o'clock on uh, Sunday night. Uh, so literally, start to finish. And it was a custom paint job on it as well. It's that good a kit. It will go together with no problems. You must have dodged stencils. Oh, yeah. Well, no, stencils are on, but it was a custom marking one, so it didn't have as many as the normal yeah, phantoms have. Insane. So it's a specialist paint scheme. Nice. So, uh, but yeah, it, it 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 is that good a kit. It goes together. It, it's that classic two halves. You know, we were talking about other the classic kits. You know, none of this center thing, and then the wing section just drops in underneath. It's actually a really really good kit. I love it. It's the same. It holds so many fond memories of me plonking them together because they're just a dream fit. The hornets and stuff that everyone knows me for. They're complicated things. You got flaps and things and there's plates to go on it and you know getting it to line up can be a handful. But that kit actually straightforward, beautiful, really nice. 
And in, back in the day, what I used to do with that one is put the uh, Ares cockpit in it because that was the, yeah, the yeah. technical upgrade yeah. uh, to go into that one, pop the Ares, and then obviously used to put in the Ares uh, burner cans in the back. And that's all it really needed to give you just the, a little bit of an upgrade. But generally, out of the box, it's actually a really, really nice kit. So, so anyway, the reason we're showing it, we've got a few for sale, and they're actually mm. not a bad price, to be honest. I know, obviously... Sukimori's got an academy now, and obviously yeah. Meng's bringing one out, and you've got mm-hmm. Tamiya's F4s and whatever else. But like I say, we did, we did see the midfield discuss it. It's like, well, should we get some in? It's a bit of a classic, and yeah. um, you know, and and it's not overly expensive. Not when we're comparing it now to seventy second kits that are creeping up to. <laughs> well, it is, isn't it? I'm not. Oh. T- I'm not even mentioning that one yeah. yet. But you know where I'm coming from. Yeah. You know. Mm. For um for a seventy second sort of kit is creeping up to the forty pound mark, and then you know we've got these on a bit of a discount as well. We we'll put ten yes. percent off them in the specials bit, mm-hmm. and yeah, if you want a bit of a flow back, like I say, if Phil can build one in a weekend, then there you go. Mm. Can't yeah. bad, can it? No, no. They but are, we know yeah. obviously we know there is better versions out there, but it's a mm. lot more expensive. So if you do, I presume the part counts a lot more as well because obviously this is. Has a gamble from what the eighties, nineties is this late eighties, nineties? I don't know when these yeah. first came out. If I'm honest, but yeah, um, yeah. If you want a bit of a classic build, then we thought we'd, we'd grab some. We've seen them at a supplier and mm. and got a few in. To be honest, we haven't got many, so you know it's not like we've got tons of them. So grab one if you fancy a bit of a a throwback build. Also, like we talked about recently, Mojo builds they're good. Yeah, because they just yeah, go together. Sorry. They're not overcomplicated. There's no, yeah. you know, tricky parts to it and all the rest of it. Yes, you just have to watch alignment. Make sure your sprue tabs are nicely sanded back just for it. Mm. But straight out of the box, it's actually really, really nice kit. Yeah. So anyway, so, that's that's one of the things coming in. Also, we have got some other items. The Obi Two Thousand Marauders and Sky Raiders could be in by Friday. On the same. Really nice. So yeah. They're in the country anyway, so. Obviously, we'll see. It could be on Friday, so I think they'll get dispatched next week. Um, and then, really, it's just stocking up for Florifest. Yes. The plan in a couple of, well, what was it, three weeks, did we three say? Three weeks this weekend, yeah. yeah. So, yeah, we're just getting our uh, ducks in a row and all that sort of stuff, getting stuff ready and in So mm-hmm. for the big weekend. So, yeah, we're just ticking over nicely, to be honest. It's, it's going okay. Very nice. Yeah. Excellent. Good job. Well, as you say, a lot of the stuff you can see underneath us or in here, well, we've obviously spoken about last week because these were sort of new in last week and now I've got them down in here. Mm. But um, what one thing we will say, and we're just being honest because we do do a lot of shout outs for this, but for people who have got these on pre-order with us, uh, we've got a handful of you who um, have yet to pay and aren't answering your emails and things like that, please check your junk folders and all the rest of it because obviously if you don't want these kits, we've got a waiting list for them. Um, so we've got a waiting list literally for the 109s and we've got a waiting list as well for the Dieppe um, uh, Hurricanes as well. Mm. So if you are having a problem financially or something else, we are human. Just let us know. We can give you more time. It's just we need to know because obviously if we don't, we've technically sold our allocation as gone, but we've got quite a few of you who haven't got in contact and you're not answering messages and stuff. So it, you know, we can only get to a certain point where we're going to have to offer them up to obviously our waiting list. Um, so, you know, we've got people who are literally snatching for them. So, um, yeah, if you're not going to answer and we can't get hold of you, I think, by the end of this week, um, you know, obviously we're going to have to offer them up. But please check your spam and all the rest of it. If you've got one on order and we haven't got in contact with you, shoot us a message because maybe something's got lost or something else like that. But we're acutely aware of the financial, you know, strain that we're all under at the moment. And, uh, you know, you might have not known about it at the time and now things are a bit tighter or something's happened. Let us know. We are human. We are here. Just talk to us and we'll sort it out for you. We can put it aside, whatever you want. But as long as we know you want it, that's fine. But if you don't, obviously, we've got lots of people who are waiting for them. So, um, you know, let us know and we can pass it on to them. And it's no, you know, nothing's a problem, really. No, no. So, yes. So, yeah, um, the Azagawa old US Air Force ground crew set sold out fast. Yes, definitely. So that was a quite a popular one. We've got the other sets in, as you can see. The uh, mm-hmm. I think we showed them probably last week, but yeah, we've got a few more sets in as well yeah. for the seventy second mm-hmm. stuff, which isn't a bad price, really. Like say no. with an eleven pound is not really overly expensive for stuff, is it? If you want a weapon set? No, uh, no, yeah. not at all. But you should say we've got all the other bits and pieces down in here. This is all the new stuff that's been in over the last few weeks. Yeah, exactly. So, so if you want to. Keep an eye on those ones. Obviously, as new stuff comes in, it will appear just on the, yeah. the actual PM site as normal, just down in there. So, again, I'll get these reviews, these three done 
mm. um, obviously this week. And you'll probably get probably, well, one would definitely be up with you tomorrow. I'll probably get one up on Friday. I'll get up one on Monday with you as well. So, uh, but with those ones, so there's some know, really nice stuff there. Just going back to the 109. Mm. Obviously, we not long that we mentioned this last week, didn't we? Obviously, had that uh, Curtis Hawking, is it? Yes. Peace, yeah. which as we call it. Mm -hmm. And then obviously, got the Tamiya stuff as well, you know, like the Spitfires and roughly same mm -hmm. size ish, give or take, aren't they? Yes. But actually, the price of that's really good compared to mm. if you go in, you know, it's a, it's well, you know, it's above, uh, below, sorry, the 100 quid mark. Yes. Which a lot yeah. now are obviously 30 second stuff, especially if it, that detail is obviously crept in. Creeping mm. quite a bit over now, isn't it? You know what I mean? Yes. Yeah. yeah. Exchange rates and things. So I don't think that's a bad deal. Plus, as oh. well, obviously, if you get this version, you get a little. You get the figure. You get a little Eric Hartman with it mm. as well. That yes. definitely won't be in the next batch because obviously this is one of them. Like I said before, first run, uh, Board will do it as well. Board will. Yeah, you always get Rye something Field, in there. Rye Field do it a little bit as well. You get something in it. Mm -hmm. It's the first run, and then after that, obviously, it's uh, it's just the normal kit. But I mean, it's have. To 109, you know, yeah. <laughs> it's one of the probably most popular subjects. Yes, that, that gets sold, isn't it? Really, you know. Yeah, definitely. No, I must admit, I, it's a great kit. We said before, the thing is, Zukamori a few years ago was really expensive, and again, the nice thing is, is that they come down a little bit in price to this sort of level, which I think yeah, is yeah. perfectly acceptable. Mm. And other things have crept up and surpassed it in a lot of cases. So Zukamori now is actually, I used to think they, they were top end of it. Mm. And, you know, we do the budget, the medium, and obviously the expensive. Is that Now they're just competing with everything else. And they are fantastic kits. I've never denied that. We've done lots of reviews of them over the year. Um, but it's like yet to build anything out there. So that would be my first build. Of one. Yeah, I think to be honest, they they were really, really quite museum quality and complicated. Mm. You're building it from the ground up, especially the early release. I think they've reined it in a little bit. Mm -hmm. um, I, I, you've still got a good pot because that is a heavy box, as you know now. Yeah, you've got yeah. the, that that one oh nine is full. It's mm. It is. Um, so again, it's it's definitely a builder's kit. Mm. You know, it's definitely not a weekend build. <laughs> no, <laughs> no, 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 yeah, you're in for a journey with that particular build. build with it, but yeah. again, it's it's it, the details there. So, mm -hmm. Hmm. yeah, all good. Very nice indeed. Cool. Me. So, yeah. So yeah, so we get those ones all sorted out for you. Uh, that's not a problem. Uh, I've lost my thing there. Where are we? There we go. Um, so we'll get those done. Obviously, in the uh, special office. Obviously, you can see our phantoms there. Look. Our phantoms are in there. They say thirty-five quid. That's the price you used to pay for it in the sort of early 2000s, wasn't it? The early noughties. It was always around about 35 quid for that kit. You can't moan at that, can you? No, that that's it. Kit. You know, no. I know it's not a new kit, but it's still recessed and, mm. you know, you... it is what it is, isn't it? That's what it, it is, you know. Absolutely. It's a, again, it's one of those kits, like I was saying before, it's a straightforward, no-nonsense build. We talk about it a lot recently. We were talking, obviously, about monogram. And, you know, we all, me and Matt often talk about how you look at kits and certainly like you've seen with that B25, the uh, the Hasegawa one looks very similar, doesn't it? Uh, it, the same, it really, really does. And I've never yeah. noticed it before. It was, uh, I was actually watching somebody build the 72nd one for some reason. It came up on my YouTube and I'm like, obviously, because I'm building it as well mm -hmm. at the minute. It's like, well, that looks familiar. That bit there, yeah. how it goes together in the detail and stuff. And look, kudos, it's obviously a very good kit. Absolutely, yeah. Um, so why not take, hmm. you know, our, our monogram's done it because obviously that was the first one for the for the uh, Azagal one. Was that? I'm not saying they've copied it. Mm -hmm. I'll say that, but no. it's very similar in the way it goes together and, and, hmm. and parts count as well. Because obviously Azagal aren't known for massive parts count. They're very to the point, shall we say? Obviously, yes. you've built quite well just about everything in 48 for these aren't they let's be honest yeah, yeah. and eddard as well and, and now i'll be 2000 or oh, i've caught on how good a mm -hmm. base kits they are and they're reboxing mm -hmm. them yeah and definitely why not and actually for good price as well hmm. and yes you've got to think the price point because obviously you buy an azagawa now it, it isn't cheap is it let's no. be honest and the kits are knocking on but when they get reboxed by say eddard and if i'll be 2000 are taking them up or whatever then you know they're i think they're at more manageable price shall we say hmm, definitely uh, no. but obviously that one's a genuine as a gal and it's pretty cheap so mm. yeah i wonder if we'll get any more be nice to see if we can uh 
Get in some way, again, like, you know, Hasegawa tend to do that thing of like reboxing, and that particular yeah. kit is there's probably about twenty reboxes of it, yeah. in different markings and things. Mm. Um, but again, it, 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 to see the original one sort of back like that, it's you know that's why when we discussed it originally about getting them in, it was like got to get them in. I don't think that's bad box art either. No, I don't either. Really I'm looking nice. at it actually on through my uh, laptop monitor. Hmm. Actually, it's quite a cool box art. Yes. It yeah. is. I, it's a very famous picture, that is. Um, as I say, it's one of the kills that they did uh, with the MIG over Vietnam. But yeah, it, you know, as you say, that old classic, very nice as well. I can't of... think of how many times yeah. I've built a Showtime 100, put it like that. <laughs> it seems no. a bit of a mismatch against uh, MIG-17. Well, the thing is, is I think Mr. Cunningham would probably agree himself. They do put up a stiff fight because they can outturn you. And oh, also yeah, they've got a gun. Not... Yeah, not <laughs> they're not man manoeuvrable. Things. Yes, it's just you know when you look at how big a phantom is compared to a, mm. it's a bit of an odd combination. But yeah, I'm, I presume you know in the hands of a decent pilot, a MiG seventeen was a bit of a formidable weapon. Yes, so. it would have been. And what was that was I don't know. I tell you what, come up as well. I know they're a bit off of our topic as usual. Mm -hmm. A MiG fifteen, a, a young lad flying a MiG fifteen. Mm. Um, obviously in the states. It's two seater one, so he's obviously he's got this this um, old, I presume US. I don't know if he were Navy or or, or Air Force or what pilot behind him. Mm -hmm. Anyway, flying this MiG fifteen, what an agricultural thing that thing oh, is! Yeah. Oh yeah. god, that looked a right nightmare. And I know nothing about flying, but you've got to have it such. Don't put your nose up or down, or it'll yeah. stall and fall. It's it's a good watch. It's Absolutely, a really good watch and all the checks that they had to do are now. Like I say, because of obviously the age of the uh, of the plane originally, mm -hmm. how like I say, um, manual it is. Yes. You know, for putting fluid in it, mm -hmm. so yeah. you've got brakes and things yes. like that. It's a really good watch. I wish I'd have written down who, who the lad was, but I'm sure there's lots of uh, YouTube videos on it. You know what I mean? It must be quite a a thing. This MiG-15 that goes up, you know, with this mm -hmm. pilot, uh, but he's had like. Uh, this, I, I presume this guy's, uh, like I say, he's not very old, a, um, mm. just a private pilot. Yeah. He's actually, the guy was saying to him, he's had proper pilots come and mm -hmm. struggle to fly it. Yeah. Because they're expecting it to be more modern and whatever. And obviously, you know, it's the dawn of the jet age and stuff. Mm. It was just proper, just. I must admit, I've seen, I do watch a lot of those, you know, because of my yeah. flight simming as well. There's a good crossover there. And the funny thing is, like they always say, Russian pilots are always thought to be by the book, by the checklist of how it works. But in some ways they have to, because the aircraft only performs at certain regimes. It's yeah. designed to do that. And that's yeah. what they do. You know, so there's certain things you can and can't do. And there, it's not like sort of Western aircraft, which is sort of multitasking and can do this, that, and, you know, flip around. A lot of the Russian stuff can't do that. The older stuff, clearly, it had one design to do. It did its job, and that was literally it. So you had to literally, you, you know, your rotation takeoff speed, your landing speed, your yeah, factor yeah. of this. There was no margin for yeah, error because it would fall out of the sky. And yeah, that's it. Yeah, it so. was no margin for error. I think you'd be really in trouble with it. And even <laughs> the injection seat was a proper last resort. I yeah. think you didn't want to use it. No, you didn't want to use it. No. That's, it yeah. was, you know. Yes. Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah, it was really interesting watch. So anyway, <laughs> I digress as usual. That's it. It is. Very good. But anyway, it's nice to see those ones. Um, obviously, there's lots of new releases coming along. And one that we hinted at yesterday was uh, this. Um, so this is the much anticipated, and now fixed, just saying, uh, Harrier GR7 GR9 kit by Hobby2000. Yeah. So there's a little bit of backstory to this one. Uh, they got hold of me. Well, Matt got hold of me. Was it Saturday? Saturday, yeah. Saturday. Uh, and asked me to check it. Um, which I did, and I found a few problems. Um, to be honest, it's that if anybody's built Harriers, you'll know what we're talking about here. It's the Lerixes, which is this area. Oh, it's probably this one to show here. It's the bit where the wings join the fuselage at the top. There's a 65% and there's a 100% Lerix. And it's always been a bit of a minefield going through. And I've said for years and years and years, why don't they just put both in the kit? It would be so much easier because then you can pick and choose which one you want to do. Um, what happened was when they sent me the thing through to double check it, I double checked it and all the rest of it, and only one of the markings in there could use the the lyrics it came with because it only came with the sixty five percent lyrics. Um, so anyway, I got back uh, with um, Tiger Hobbies who were behind this one, and then their guy who can't be mentioned got in touch with me 
uh, who's the the uh, manufacturer, and basically was wanted me to go through it with them, which I did. And now, and this is the great thing to this now, you actually get both the 65% and the 100% lyrics. So you've got both types in there. So that means this is, in theory, the definitive Harrier now, because you could do all the versions from the GR7, the GR7A, and obviously the GR9 as well now. And you won't Take have your five. I think you can backdate it to a five as well, yes. Okay. It's a bit of sanding in there, but yeah, you can take it back to a five as well. Um, and you've got no problems, and that's the nice thing to it. So you can go right the way through. We've redone the instructions as well uh, to point out the different versions of how it should be and everything else as well. So that's sorted now. Um, so yeah, from my point of view, chuffed as a nut. Well, one that they listened and did it, which is amazing. Uh, but uh, yeah, that will be one to put in your stash, I would say, because we don't often see the GR79 kits around. I think it's one to build. Yeah, definitely. I'm going to build it. Well, me and Matt have already said I'm going to have to do the wraparound old camo <laughs> for the retirement scheme one because that's great. So I'm going to have one of these kits and uh, definitely at some point I will be coming back to it and rebuilding it because to me that's one of those ones now where it's a safe kit to have in your stash because you've got all the versions. It's not like, oh, I need the other lyrics. There was a company, I can't remember who I it was, used to do the resin I, version. I was it flight? It may have been yeah. flight path used to do it. I can't remember who it was now. Yeah, I, I'm not 100% either. It could have been flight path, but yeah, they did do the 100%. I think I had to, a long time, I've never, I never mm. built it. I don't know why, but I'm sure I had one. Or yeah. I bought one for whatever reason mm -hmm. a good few years ago now, but that's long gone. But yeah, hmm. interesting. So, right then, just to get everybody up to speed with this. Obviously, this was oh, uh, opened as a pre order. I, I can't remember when. Last year? Yeah. With, yes, it was a long time ago. To be yeah, for Telford, I think. Obviously, then it all went quiet. We didn't know what was going off. I don't think. Obviously, Gary at Tiger Robbers didn't know what's going off. Blood, but anyway, it's all come back to life. We shut it down because we didn't know what was going off on our pre-order. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, talking. I've spoken to him again today. Um, everything's up and running now. They've got obviously the styrene's there, the packaging and stuff. We're hoping to get it, or or they get hoping to get it. Perhaps end of this month, beginning the next. So it's mm -hmm. pretty going to be hopefully soon. Yes. So speaking to him, what I, what we've done was as well, I've reopened the pre-order because obviously we closed it because we got good numbers on it, mm -hmm. really, really good, you know, feedback on this originally. Um, what I will say is, from any of our, our lot again, that's put the name down before, and if you don't want it, please get mm -hmm. in touch with Andy. Yeah, and we will take you off because obviously we realised it's been that long. You, I mean, we have had somebody message to say Andy has put a post up and, and said, "Look, I, me, you know, me um, interests have changed. So could you take me off?" It? That's fine. We know where we are then. But then obviously new people coming to the forum or whatever else. If you want, you know, get your name down if you want one because it's going to be again. We're only going to leave it running for a week or so because I think then we are. We're, it's going to be with us a couple of yes. weeks tops. Hopefully, yeah. I'm hoping. We're 11 for Flory Fest. That yes. is my, uh, you know, I hope they arrive by then. I've got fingers crossed that that would be really nice to mm -hmm. to have there and then. Do you know what I mean? And even if we can get one to you before. To me, yeah, it's definitely. Be really good. But, yeah. you know, I can't guarantee that, but it would be nice if that did happen. But, yes. Mm. So, yeah, like I say, we, we were on about this last year, beginning of last year. I can't mm. remember when it was that long ago. But it's nice it's actually come to fruition and it's happening and... You know, I think it's going to be more popular. I think it'll be popular, you know, again. Definitely. Absolutely. I think it will. Again, you know, to be honest with you, the kit isn't straightforward because it's got that thing with two halves, you've got an engine and you've got a belly plate to go in. And that's because the complexities of the Harrier shape. But that hasn't been improved on, even with other companies doing Harriers. Say, you, you know, they're all the same way. Um, but I'm looking forward to actually having a go at that because, again, it's a bit like we did it as a classic video build. You can go back and see that one in 8-bit. Um, but uh, it'd be nice to actually do that one again fully right the way through, and I'm actually looking forward to doing that kit. I think you should. I think you should do a dual build with a kinetic GR1. Hmm. Do them side by side. Because that is obviously GR1, obviously with the ground underneath and the camo. Hmm. That's original GR1 scheme. Yeah. Scheme, and obviously hmm. the kinetic GR1. I think that would be quite a cool looking. Yeah. Because that's the end of the beginning two. and the end of, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, that's it, definitely. I don't know how complicated, obviously, the kinetic one is to build, but, mm. um, you know, because you like Harriers, don't you? I do, yeah. You I know, John, John's a, like Harriers, doesn't he, mm. and stuff. I, 
I don't know. Yeah. I think that's a West Country thing. So we're based here, you see. We had them. Oh, yeah. um, oh, I know, yeah. obviously, for the, the Sea Harriers, we're all around here. So growing up as kids, you'd always have them buzzing low level yeah. and prattling around here. So, yeah, no, it's great. But it's such an iconic aeroplane, isn't it? The Harrier. Mm-hmm. It's just, yeah, it's a shame we ain't got them anymore. But there you go. It's yeah, really <laughs> retired, isn't it? So. Retired off, yes. They're all in uh, some yeah. Nevada at the moment. We yeah. can use for spares. Yeah, <laughs> well, that's it, isn't it? Because the US still have them, don't the Marines, is it? Yeah, the US, and yeah, obviously the Matador, which is the oh, Spanish Matador. version. Yeah. Do, they, do India still have them? Do you know what? They didn't they? Yeah, I don't know if they've retired them now, but they're on about retiring them. I don't know if they actually have yet, because they got a carrier with them on, but I think the carrier's been retired. So right. oh, I don't know. I'm not up on my Indian military thingies, but um, I know there was a rumour going around they're going to be retired. Yeah. So if they've actually done it or not, I don't know yet. So, but anyway, anyway, back to the uh, thing. Yeah. So mm-hmm. again, like I say, it's reopened for the members. If you want to get your name down, please do. Yes, definitely. And, yeah. Uh, and then we'll, uh, we'll hopefully see them soon. That'd be mm. nice. It is. Uh, another one that's taken us by surprise is this one. So this mm-hmm. is the uh, come off uh, KA twenty nine. Uh, so it's like it's a helix on steroids because I built the old 48 scale one, which is the 27. This is the 29. It's got a different front on it. As you can see, it's more flat and chiseled. Mm-hmm. Uh, but this is in 35th scale. And, and, you know, me and Matt like our helicopters in that scale. That's like the proper scale for helicopters. It's, uh, it's, well, what do you reckon size Why Cutting mat? Um, Not cutting mat as in a big cutting mat. I'm thinking like this size cutting mat. Yeah, yeah, probably. It's going to be quite tall. It's going to be, it's going to be tall, but they're quite stumpy because they don't have a tail yeah. on, so they're more stumpy, but they are quite tall, especially with the rotor it's, system Yeah, on. that rotor system. I bet it's going to be sitting... Hmm. Yeah, I bet it's going to be quite a high thing. I'm just looking at the picture out. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah. But uh, again, it's a, an interesting helicopter, definitely, and uh, there's lots of different versions with it, the uh, 29. Uh, that's obviously the gunship version with everything hanging off of it. Yeah. Um, but yeah, no, that's quite a cool looking beast. Let's say if you're into something a little bit different, definitely. Does it, does it interest you? Yeah, because I must admit, I really enjoyed doing the 27. Yeah. yeah that was the old Hobby Boss kit yeah. and uh, in the 48 scale. And But yeah, it, it was it's small, it's compact. Yeah, the rotors are a bit all over the place, but the actual unit itself is almost tank size. So And you weather it like you do tanks and stuff yeah. as well. So it's nice and compact. Yeah. So, yeah, no, really nice as well with that one. So, yes, good little uh, seller that will be, I think. That's going to be something just a little bit different, which people so really like. Just a uh, thing again for the members, what we'll do is, because we've not got a price yet, because I, I think it's been released in the Far East according to my, you know, sources I've looked at, but mm-hmm. we've got no prices or anything over here. So as soon as well, we might whack up a little bit of a quick pre-order for anybody who's interested in that, I think. Yes, I'd probably definitely. be a bit like the F thirty five. We, yeah, you know, it might actually be here, and we'll do one, and then we'll just get them in straight away, so there's no wait time. But yeah, yes. So. Uh, the other new one, and again, mm. like buses, it's uh, hurricane time again. Um, again, it's strange everyone does the Mark One. I was about to say, but that is the famous Battle of Britain one. So yes, I that's why they do it. It's just I think you can get more mileage out of a Mark Two because there's. A, you would have thought, yeah, the ABC versions yeah. and all the rest of it, but. But you can see why they do it. But yeah, Hobby Boss doing one. Like I say, mm. obviously the Trumpeter one you built. Yes. And I've built in big mm-hmm. scale. Yeah. Um, I don't think they do anything else, do they? Yeah, I don't know. Bit of a bolt out of the blue, really, that one. But again. Mm. We'll, we'll see with that. Shall we? Again, we can see how that stacks up to the Airfix one, isn't it? So I built the Airfix one, 48, and it's a great little build. goes together really, really yeah. well. You know, I can't fault it. And even That's... the Italia one's not that bad as a Mark one, I don't think. I don't know yeah. actually why I'm not any way um, aficionado of Hurricanes. Mm. I think, obviously, the most accurate one would be the Airfix, you'd hope. Yes. But again, that comes and goes. I don't yeah. even know if that's available now. It might be in the catalogue, but again, that'll go. Mm-hmm. Um, so I don't, I don't know how this is going to stack up really it'll be interesting you know because they do mm-hmm. have you know shall we say dubious accuracy issues sometimes <laughs> sometimes they can be a little allegedly bit, uh, I don't know yes it's allegedly I've seen it, but okay okay so this is the trumpeter baz truck thing but this time it actually comes with the, the trailer thing onto there as well and i've also seen it comes with a flatbed radar uh as well with that particular one so that one's due out in November. So if you're into your transport, Russian big stuff, uh, that's going to keep you busy for I'll a while. What I'm interested in, I don't know if we showed it a couple of weeks ago, is Hobby Boss were bringing out the Scammel Commander. Hmm. Yes. We did mention it, didn't we? Um, yeah. And I'm, yeah, obviously being a British tank uh, transporter. Hmm. 
the other one is obviously new release been mentioned as well as Takem. Obviously, we spoke about last week. They're bringing out the Apache uh, as well in 35th scale, but also they're doing the Fire Scout, uh, which is like a Navy over the hill or over the horizon uh, aircraft. Right. Um, okay. So it's a droney thing, but again, it looks very detailed. The way it's got the no sections yeah, and the bits and pieces, proper bang, aren't they? Because they went really, really, really quiet. Mm. Yes, I know. Obviously, COVID and all, and all that sort of it, it hit a lot of companies, but they went really quiet. And mm. I don't know. They just seem to be, you know, the V ones and what they're bringing out as well is quite interesting. Yeah. Stuff because obviously mm. we're going down the armor route, but they've kind of gone away from that now, and they're doing a bit of ships and. Mm. You know, obviously the V ones have come out. These, the the like I said, the Apache helicopter that we've just seen the other day, mm-hmm. which we'll uh, we'll mention because that's going to be another. That's, I think that'll be a huge that, seller because it's oh, yeah. the one, isn't it? I'm not yeah. being funny. I am so surprised. You know, we have shows about what they need to release and they never do. And we always think, you know, we used to say Vulcans and Buccaneers and all yeah. these things, but the Apache, something that is so iconic and has been around for decades now oh. and upgraded. Uh, especially in Afghan and things like that, is really n- well known, but nobody does one. You, what have you got? The old, you know, forty eight scale. Is it the old Panda thirty fifth one. The re- there's a really old thirty fifth. Because I've mentioned it to you before, and I can't remember if it was Academy that's re released it. I think it was, hmm. and you said it's awful. Awful. Yeah. Yeah, and that is the only one. Obviously, Italy re forty eighth has a guy who's done a forty eighth one. Yeah. A few people have done 72nd ones, to be, hmm. to be honest. Um, yeah. Probably the best of the bunch is Academy. Yeah, yeah. Because um, they do a 48th one as well, but I think that's even... They're all A's, aren't they? Yeah, there's all the early ones. Early, um, early ones. So what we're sort of hoping for is the later... We want the, the E's, really, the late, you know, the more modern ones. Mm-hmm. You want sort of definitely D's and E's. But, uh, yeah, it, again, it's one of those where, it, when you think about it, why has no one done it before? It's such an iconic helicopter. And again, you've got it. It's used all around the world as well. You know, loads of people use them. Yeah. So, you yeah. know, you can do nice Greek ones. And obviously, yeah. well, you've got Israeli, Japanese ones and Israeli. Korean ones, Israeli ones. Yeah, yeah that's yeah. it. Um, and a lot of Western NATO companies. Yeah, a lot of NATO stuff. We use it, don't we? Mm. Yeah. Um, yeah, there's a few. There's definitely a few users of it. So, hmm. yeah. And again, it being, I think if it's, if, if I was going to say somebody to release it, it would have either probably now as well Tacum mm-hmm. or Academy. Yeah. yeah. To do it justice. You know, we are a good few other companies, but I think don't think the price will be overly bad either. If I'm no. honest. And the thing is, you know, with Tacum as well, you're going to get a good solid build. Yeah. Well, Tacum it is. Do that's that, it. Yeah. They, they are. Um, I'm itching to build a few more Tacum kits, to be honest. I know we've kind of dropped them as a brand, but we're getting mm. them in as pre ordered. We're not going to carry really stock, but yeah. we are. You know, we are going to have stuff in, and I say that little Panzer one I built, where you got the two in one, or mm-hmm. you, know, you could build one, the A or the B, was it? Yeah, absolutely fantastic kit. I've just because yeah, it's the first tackling kit I've ever built, and definitely not mm-hmm. the last. No, good, no, good, good manufacturer. And there we go, one of Phil's favourites. It is. I love that helicopter. Does this mean now I don't have to build the thirty fifth one? No, because obviously <laughs> something turned up for you, so you've got not getting out of that. I've got no excuse now. I have a mass set. <laughs> That's it. Once the mass set arrives, you can't get out of it. You're that. into it. But yeah, it's basically what we've got down in here is the MI8 or the 16, depending if you're doing the export version. Uh, but this one is nice because it looks like it's got all the chin armor on it and the bits and pieces, and obviously the pylons, weapons pylons, and that. So again, it's 48 scale. That's basically it. Goes along with their hind as well that we saw a couple of years ago. Well, doing the thing, aren't they? So all the 35th Soviet era helicopters, the hind. The MI4, mm-hmm. uh, sorry, that one. Yeah. And the 24, they've downgraded them now to 48. Because they're, yeah. they're doing the hind, uh, the hound, sorry, the MI4 and 48 as well. Yeah. So, yeah. Nice. Again, uh, yeah, 48, 35th is the scale for me for helicopters, but that's yes. obvious because that's kind of my scale. Mm. But I don't think 48th is actually a bad scale for me no. either, if I'm no. honest. Um my problem is the 30-second scale helicopters just seem an odd scale. Odd scale. Yes, it is, definitely. It's I think 35th, other, 48th, it? yeah, that's what yeah, you want to be. But anyway, we've mentioned this how many times, haven't we? But, yeah. Um, but the nice thing with that kit as well, clearly, you'll be able to do it as an MI-16, the export version, in anybody's markings. So <laughs> knock yourself out on that one. I'm surprised they haven't designated it as an MI-8-16, stroke because that's what's normally done with them. I think uh, it is. And you can do amazing schemes in them. I've got to say, I think it so, is. I think it is an MI-816. Yeah. Um, 
So yeah, I mean, aftermarket people will be all over it again for schemes and stuff because every everybody uses them pretty yes. much, isn't it? Oh god, yeah, everything. Absolutely uh, everything. No, for the seventy second one, which I think is the hobby boss kit, mm. there's loads of decal schemes for that. Yeah. So here's another one we didn't expect. <laughs> or need. Anyway. <laughs> you like a Phantom. You should be saying that. You should be championing I do like the Phantom, absolutely. And it's nice to see the G's got a bit of love. So the G's what we call the Wild Weasel version of it. Um, and it flew around, I think, until the late... or Was it the early 2000s? It got phased out at that point. I think the F-16 started doing the old Iron Man stuff. Uh, but yeah, it is nice to see another Phantom. That's basically, you can't go wrong with too many Phantoms. And uh, so, you know, there's only a few lumps and bumps differences with it, which is quite nice. But it's the more modern one. So you've got like that slatted real tail on it and things. But it does look nice. The detail looks pretty good down in here. There's a couple of bits I have spotted, but I'm wondering if it is just because it's like the CAD stuff like this. So I'm not even going to mention it because I'm probably wrong. Nice little bit of weapons as well. So as well, you've got some Mavericks as well as the uh, the Harm Missiles. Um, you've got a couple of sparrows down in there. I don't know if it ever did those. Uh, you've got both the pods as well. You've got the short and the long ones. So, yeah, no, it's quite nice, really. All got the bits in there. I did see a thing earlier where it's got the slatted. I think this is movable. Yes, it is. I did see a, a little gift thing doing it in and out. So it's a nice kit because this one here, this uh, you've got the, the slats on the wingtips, but also you've got the inboard ones as well. And there it is showing it deployed. So you have got the option in there with that, which is a nice touch with the kit. Yeah, there we go. So you can have them um, open or closed. There it's closed. So, yeah. Again, I'm not being funny. You can't think with men's quality of their kits because they are no. very, very... I mean, their Hornets were nice. I know you kind of championed the Hobby Boss one, hmm. um, which makes me wonder, do you think Hobby Boss might bring out a Phantom? <laughs> <laughs> Just to, Jump, jump you know. down that one with everyone else. The reason I championed the Hobby Boss one, one is it was a little bit cheaper and you got a little bit more detailed into it. That was really the difference. Out of actual kit-wise... There's probably nothing between them. It's just that was really why I was sort of going down. I preferred the Hobby Boss sort of version of it. But generally, that looks all pretty much spot on. As I say, there's a couple of things I'm a little bit concerned about, but I'm sure it won't be like that when it gets released. So, uh, But generally, it does look very, very nice indeed. So, yeah, good, 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 so, good. So, so good or bad then? I think it's good. I like that one. i tell you what I like. Not Normally, I don't like grey paint paint schemes i like a bit of camo and stuff but the hill scheme which that one has has the gunship gray like an f-16 oh yeah so it's light gray at the front and then over the wings and then the outer wing tips are light gray as well so it sort of has that f-16 color scheme to it and uh, i think they look quite cool in that you know so definitely but uh it's a phantom at the end of the day you can't go wrong with a phantom but again, like we were saying all these years we've been desperate for phantoms because to be honest that one you've got there was it and Hasegawa's was literally, you think, if you wanted the D uh, or the S, and if you wanted the E or the F or the G, that was the one you would use. You wouldn't use it for the early one because that had a raised panel lines on it. It was the only kit they had with raised panel lines. Um, and it was nice when other people come along with recessed panel lines to be able to do it. But, yeah, no, it is. It's nice. It seems to be about 20 years since that love's done the full circle now and the Phantom's getting a lot of love again. Yeah, it's everybody's jumped on the bandwagon since sort of Tamiya, isn't it? There's Okimori and yeah. see now them are doing it. And yeah, there's, a, there's definitely going to be a few options out there. And I bet, to be honest with you, that as well is probably going to be the same uh, price, I'd say, as the Zukimori one. Hmm. Yeah. People take the exchange and all the rubbish at the minute. Yes. That's not going to be a cheap kit. I reckon it's going to be same, similar to the Hornet, mm -hmm. would you yes. say? I would say it's probably going to be on the ballpark of the Hornet, yeah. Which, again, when you take in consideration how much a Zucky Mori Phantom is now, mm. it's yes. going to be similar-ish. Because aren't yep. they doing a G as well? Uh, yes, yes, allegedly. It's due out soon, actually. Yeah, because I saw a built-up one at a show. I don't know yeah. which show it was in Japan, and it had it actually shown it on the stand with it all on there. Mm. So that's what I was saying. There's, I think, the before this one, clearly. So it shouldn't be that long. I don't know when it is due out. But, uh, yeah, so, again, we're spoiled. It's a bit like when all the Hornets suddenly dropped, like yeah. the F-18s, yeah, and the Growlers and that. Suddenly it was like they're everywhere, and now we're getting Phantoms. So very nice indeed. But, yeah, again, it's really nice. You've got a good option there, a good, strong kit. Shouldn't be any problems with it. Love it. Go for it. Do you um, like stencils? <laughs> yeah, you do get stencils for your Phantom. I do, I do like a Phantom, but the stencils are just a killer. 
just, I think the worst one is actually the Japanese ones because the yeah. Japanese ones they are sticklers for stencils. So whereas some of them they might just get yeah painted over and not worried about though they are always on there to the letter right the way through so when they used to do was it blue impulse the really dark colored ones and it had it in the white it was quite striking because you had all the stencil data all over it in white but yeah that's a uh, that's a few evenings of but it's a nice chilled music oh, on and uh, deckling after what i showed yesterday with tracks building individual tracks yeah. i suppose it's the same yeah, you need to podcast on or some nice music to get no, your zen. You do, to be honest. I think and you're in the same boat because you can only do so many at a time before mm. you, you, you're handling it and touching it, aren't you? Do you know what I yeah. mean? Yeah. Uh, we had it with the Buccaneers because Buccaneers mm. had on that little so second one, didn't it? And they say mm. with tracks, you can only build so many because you need that section to drive where you can, you know, yes. carry on, shall we say. But yeah, no, interesting. So. Definitely. Right, okay. I think that's it then for those bits. I don't think we've got any more. Should we pop over to questions? Uh, or do you want to look at pre-orders? But I suppose we sort of covered that in here. We've covered kind of pre-orders because that's all new releases. I don't, I don't think we're, we're just waiting for pricing and stuff like that. So the only thing oh, do you want to just mention the drills? Yes. Um, yeah, for members, obviously, I know we've had these in before and in before. We're going to get try and get some in before um, Flory Fest. I don't know yeah. if you've got any, but I do need to get the order in by the end of the week, to be honest. Mm -hmm. So it, it, it's here for a couple of weeks because it does uh, got a bit of a lead time for where we get them. So mm -hmm. if you do want one, we champion them. They're quite a good bit of kit, to be yeah. honest. Yeah. Uh, just whack your name down, please. Yeah. Again, and like I say, as soon as we're in, we'll, we'll get you invoiced and they'll be off to you. Mm -hmm. Definitely. So yeah. you get all of those ones, and I think that's it. Yeah. Uh, those came in. Uh, and I've gone out now. It's still, yeah, it's still open if you want one. They're still if you want one, we can still do it at the price for the jumbo. Yeah. Fat Annie. So. Yeah. Again, so yeah, if you if you want them, we'll leave open. But we're just waiting for prices. Like I said last week, we're just waiting for some prices, and then mm -hmm. we can get some new stuff up there. Yes. Like said, there's a lot of stuff coming out. I would have thought as well, to be honest. The ICM Beaufort would have been around, but it's not at the minute. No, I must admit, I've seen him pushing it a lot on social media and that, and I assumed it was out and about, and but we haven't had it dropped yet. We're just waiting, obviously, for our supplier to get them. So, mm. yeah, be nice. We'll yes. get another one then, another one to review. Yes, definitely. So that would be Ooh. a nice kit, I think. Nice, that good, was solid what we kit. needed to talk about. Mm -hmm. I remember the new tornado coming from Edard. Oh, yes. Yeah. Which is another East. IDS? IDS, we think, yeah, the interdictory IDS, strike. Yeah. Um, Phil, when he edits this together, we'll find some pictures of the schemes because it actually looks quite <laughs> a nice one. And there's an early Marines one, which is sort of that grey and white one. Yeah. Which is very early, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Sort of, um, is it Creed's Marine, is it? Do they still Creed's call Marina, that? yeah. I think it still is, isn't it? And mm -hmm. then there's some other schemes as well for it. I know we had that other boxing, didn't they, that we had in? Yes. This is obviously they've got some more and they're doing a different version of it. So I'm, I presume Nathan will have one. No, oh, I'm sure he will. He'll, He'll have to need one. Down. It's a tornado, <laughs> isn't it? A Revell tornado. But yeah, um, yeah good, good solid kit to base with and again, some nice hmm. nice schemes in it. I've yes. been thinking actually, talking about Ed Ard and you know how we had their decals and stuff hmm. and the peely of the top off and that. See, I don't build aircraft. So it's not really my thing, but I think you should try them again now you know how to use them, just to see the break the myth that they're not as bad as people make it out to be. I think really from what I've heard from other people, and lots of people have been in contact with me over this, is that they've got to go down on a gloss finish because they need to properly bed down. So if you do peel that top coat off, which apparently you don't have to do, no. I do say you don't have to, you just leave it on there. But if you do, yeah. um, then obviously that's where people have had tearing problems and, right. you know, it's not coming off totally. So, but again, from everybody I know who's used them successfully, they've said, put a gloss coat down, make sure your finish is absolutely smooth so it's got plenty of grip. So that decal can hold on below and that's you won't have a problem. But if you're trying to get away with it over just a smooth finish and not a gloss finish, they said it's in the lap of the gods because sometimes you'll pull them off and have no problem at all and then one will bite you. Um, but also That's the nice. big thing like I had is just you are aware that there is, if you haven't taken it off like I wasn't, if you're coming along with enamel weathering, with will, you know enamels, be careful because it will peel it off. So, so it then you have to off. overcoat it again to seal it down before you weather it? Yeah. Right. Well, right, there's a bit of a contradiction there though because you're saying put over a glossy surface, so high yeah. shine surface with no texture. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but it'll grip better. 
the deck of will, yeah, because it's got. What? Yeah, but you know what I mean, though, because it's imagine <laughs> it like the yeah, but it, I know what you mean because you're you going to say, but if there's no the grip, grip, how grip, does it hold? Grip. But there's no micro pockets of air that yeah. means it can lift Still and grip. peel with it. Yeah. You know, yeah. so but yeah, because I know a lot of people who got into contact with me over the so what, since we've gone on about this about a year now, but and said. I now know it's perfect. And they literally, if it's, um, you know, if you're doing an area like here, they literally just gloss that bit, even if it's hand glossed on, and then let it dry, deckle down onto it, let it completely go, and then peel it off really nice and slowly and yeah. have no problem with it at all, you know? And they say, now, when you know and you're more careful, it's the bit where, like with me, what happened to yeah, me yeah. is I'm weathering the hell out of this thing and suddenly it fell apart. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, that was the thing. And because mine had that, well, it was like these are, I assume it's the same construction as the uh, Hellcat, they don't have panels that go side to side. It overlaps. Yeah. And then when I, you put the decal onto it, it didn't actually get right in the, like the 90 degree of it. So it sort of just was there. So when I did it, it tore down the, you know, the actual yeah. panels of it. Yeah, yeah, so, yeah. you know, and that was it. Because the wing one was actually okay. The wings we didn't have problems with. It was actually on the overlapping of the panels, but that yeah. tiny little gap that made it, yeah, rip it what off. Was, was it the MI-24 you did where you got rid of the yeah. film with thingy? Was it Bergen? Bergamot decals did you use? Can't remember now. But or was it Linden Hills? Or Linden I think Hill. it was Linden, Linden Hill decals. Yeah. yeah, that's what I used to do with them. Because what you can actually do, put your decal down and the carrier film is under it. Yeah. But you put it down and with a cotton bud, you just tease it. And you can take all the carrier film off and it just stays on there because it doesn't lift off underneath. But you used to be able to get rid of the entire lot with those. So that was but, a bit of a white spirit you did that, weren't it? To dissolve the carrier film. Yeah, just yeah? dissolve the carrier film off of it. Yeah. And yeah. away. But you find it doesn't work with other people. So no, it only works people. with certain yeah. Yeah. manufacturers. I reckon, you know what, going back to decals, do you know what I reckon that might work with? It's the Vesta decals. Because mm. they are uber thin. Yeah. And I think that's the secret. If they have really thin decals, you can actually just take the carrier film away. You know. Uh, and just, as you say, it just rolls up, just peels off. It's great. Yeah. Mm. Anyway. <laughs> Never questions, mind. let's get to questions. Okay, so Andrew says, just wanted to thank you all for the quick delivery of his parcel with his Italian T34 and signing pads. No problem. Much appreciated. No yep. problem. Uh, Paul says, uh, can I ask two questions? First, Andy has got a diorama book. No, he hasn't. No, he hasn't. Well, he has, but he's not <laughs> yeah. a book. He's in, yeah. he's in online, I think. No, it's my book, actually, but yeah. Okay, and he goes, he thinks it's from AK Publishing, but he's not sure which one it will, uh, it could be. Can it's you show good. it again? I can't because it's not here. It's at home, but it's oh. the um, it's the AK Diorama FAQ book. They do three versions. Yeah. That's Phil will be able to edit a photo in, but there's mm -hmm. a big Bible one, and then you've got two other ones as well. One, I think, Snow, Ice, and Water, and then one about planning. But uh, right. it's the big one that I keep showing. It's not cheap. Mm -hmm. I said this. It's not a cheap book, but my God, it's a good book. It really covers everything to do with dioramas yeah. and bases. It's brilliant. Brilliant. To be honest, their entire uh, FAQ I series love... is very good because uh, I've got upstairs. They sent me one, actually, and uh, it was the basic one about yeah. modelling from yeah. start to finish. Yeah. Um, and it is. It, it, it's a one-stop, you know. If, if you're new to modelling, you need that book. Yeah. So it's the basic I mean, you've, got to, you've obviously got to take into consideration they're selling their own product in it. Yeah, well, of course uh, it is. It's all their obviously. own products. But yeah. if you look a bit beyond that and just mm. look at the actual techniques and stuff and read them, um, you know, it's it's a really, really good book. All of mm. them are, like the aircraft one, the armour one, the figure one I've got was amazing, the figure one. Mm. Um, and, uh, they do a sci-fi one and they do a car one. So they are yes. covered for pretty much all. The only mm -hmm. one they've done is a ship one. For, mm. But I'm sure they will. Probably. Yeah. I, I presume that's going to take longer to put together because mm -hmm. of the complexity of building a, a you know ships and boats and galleons or whatever else. There's a lot to it, so mm. I, I presume they would have done one. But any of them are really good books because you could take stuff from any of them and, and cross over to different yeah, yeah. genres, and that's why I yeah. like them as well. You can pick and choose and stuff. But mm. mainly, obviously, they, they are weathering based because that's mm. what AK obviously sell as a product, isn't it? But yeah, yeah, no, good, good books. So. Fantastic. Yeah. Uh, so secondly, that he's uh, he's got the Sky Hart 148 decals for the Royal Danish Air Force F-16A-M Dan Borg 800 special colour scheme. Uh, the one that looks like a giant Danish flag. Mm -hmm. Which 148 scale F-16 kit would you recommend? 
It's only um, the genetic one, isn't they, really? That's yeah. sort of scratch, but I would wait for the new one because they're doing the early ones again, aren't they? The mm-hmm. original one is, yes. is, I think it's all right because Nathan's built it, but mm. I'd wait because the gold series, the new tooled one should be out soon, so I'd probably hang on for that. Yes? Uh, and that's what he's actually saying, will it be worth waiting? I would wait because, again, sense. they are bringing out the old classic, um, you know, yeah. version of it with the different tail and that, and they're reboxing it or redoing as well there. The new one, so which is nice because they're older ones, although totally buildable, they can be a handful, as Nathan or attest to. Um, they're a little bit clunky, so I would wait because those new ones look really, really nice. Yeah, uh, Russell says, uh, he's going to be heading down to the Falkland Islands in a few months, uh, in November, and we'd like to do some modeling whilst away. Uh, the only issue he has with access to whatever I can take with me. Uh, I, you can post. I've posted to the Falklands many times, to be honest. Post all your stuff there. Yeah, you yeah post your stuff. But, yeah. You pick it up when you're there and then curry it back again. That's but that's it. a bit cheap, not. <laughs> <laughs> well, the thing is, mine went through BFPO down there, so right. it's flat rate, isn't it? So it's fine. Uh, anyway, he says that, uh, he's going to be uh, he's going to be down there, uh, which will be probably um, an absolute minimum of a couple of paintbrushes, baking its tools, and uh, definitely bits and pieces. You're seeing no airbrushing equipment, no smelly paints or thinners due to the communal accommodation situation. Do you have any suggestions for simple kits uh, that require minimum of equipment and paints? Ah, uh, well, you see, this is where I'd flip that mm-hmm. because I'd take a complicated kit mm. that's more build time than paint. Oh, yeah, that'd be a good one, yeah. You know what I mean? That's mm. where I would probably take an interior kit or something, or something mm. with a high parts count that's a lot more complicated to put together. As long as you could do it module and take it yeah. to bits if you want to bring it back and paint it. Because obviously the painting part's going to be the issue, isn't it? Mm. Um, he says that he's primarily an aircraft modeler, but he's thinking about small-scale armour. Well, if you want small-scale, the Tamiya 48 stuff's nice, isn't it? Oh, yeah, the Tamiya 48. That's yeah, really that's nice stuff. That's not big. Obby Boss do a bit of it as well. If you're going 72nd, loads of companies do 72nd kits. But again, mm. you'll rattle through them that fast, you'll run out of stuff to do. I'm thinking, obviously, if you're down yeah. there for a good few months, you want a, you know, something yes. to do. I'm thinking, something to get your teeth into. Well, you think is you could yeah. do something like that. Yes. You wouldn't put the wings on so it's transportable, yeah. but you could hand paint the entire, all the detail bits. Yeah, you could, yeah. I'd take some you know? gen, gen, well, I'd say, because we sell it, but the Gen 3 yeah. paints are Acrylics. brilliant brushing for interiors and stuff. You could definitely get away with that. Um, yeah. 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 I think there's, there's plenty of options. I'd take yeah. Yeah, a simple toolkit, as we always do down there, because no doubt you'll be able to get bits and pieces down there and pinch stuff from other people. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then, as you say, you could take a, a more complex kit and then hand paint all the rest of it. If you're using Gen 3s being acrylics, it's only clean out of water as well. So you're not going to be smelly. The only thing is, and I'll tell you what, you probably don't realise how strong a smell Tamiya Extra Thin is until you've not been around it for a while and yeah. everybody starts going, Jesus, that stinks. Yeah, it is, yeah. <laughs> I know, yeah. It is, but, yeah, you don't when you... You, you become nose blind nose with blind it. To yeah, stuff, you, you, you do. Um, yeah. But yeah, so from that point of view, I don't know. Glue-wise, they do like the lemon one as well, Tamiya, which is basically like a thin glue. But contact here and stuff, you can use those as well and you won't have a problem with it. But it's amazing the amount of people I know and I've just been, I've been airbrushing or anything and they'll go, oh, it stinks of glue in here. Mm-hmm. And you don't realise how strong extra thin is until you've not been near it for a long time. So, yes. But, yeah, lots of kit options. As I say, the Tamiya 48 scale tanks, I think, are great. John's built a few now, isn't he, in that? Yeah, so, they've yeah. gone together really yeah. well. Yeah. So, but, yeah, I think Matt could be right. Do something with a bit of interior and detail. You could hand paint all the interior and then, obviously, don't put the wings on it yeah. and then bring it home for when you get it for final assembly and do it. But you're down there during the summer as well. So, you'd be fine going down November. It'll be spring. I was about to say, that's summer down there, isn't it? It Probably is. Now, um, thing, yeah. You can go, you know, sunbathe with the penguins. Yeah. <laughs> uh, how about a pre-order for the clear prop MiG-23, please? That's from Gary. Well, yeah. We're looking clear props, that. yeah. Yeah. Not not thingy. Clear prop's just one of them where it's um, get, us getting it. Mm. That's the thing. It's us getting hold of it. So yes. Not, not, yeah. We won't sell it, but yeah, it's good because it's just some good stuff. Because you did that mow up, didn't you? I've got that yes. no and that. Yeah. No, that's right. Yeah. Uh, that last question was just uh, Peter saying about matchbox kits. But that's only because he's trying to flog you his stash of matchbox kits. He would sell them, would he? <laughs> but he would. <laughs> right. Okay. There we go. That's it. The only last thing up, so obviously, the 25% special is still ongoing. 
Mm -hmm. Usual bits down in there. If you want to grab everything from those, this is our discontinued line. Some of it is sold out, we can see in there. But anything else, obviously, you can see these are all brand new kits, 25% off, uh, and away you go. So no problem with any of those ones down there. The other special ones tend to be sort of special deals and prices, but it, it gets updated and various things get removed from it. No doubt we'll have a load of bits and pieces in there. We do floor invest in a few weeks' time as well. So yep. if you want to grab anything from in there, you can do. Uh, as always, you get all your usual bits and pieces over at the VM store, yep. over at pmmodelsuk.com. Got all your paints. I know Matt's been doing paints with Lisa this morning. Restocking yeah, all the, yeah, the attacker, attacker needs to go back in. So he's asking about some attacker, I think. Yeah, it, we, have, we have to sort it out, but that should be back in stock tomorrow. Mm -hmm. uh, another AK orders in, so that's paid for. So that might be a buy back end of next week. Uh, mm -hmm. Yeah, no usual, usual stuff really. So just ticking over nicely. So Very good. not complain. No, no, all good stuff, definitely. Yeah. Right then, guys, we will leave it right there. Uh, no show tomorrow for live in the evening because obviously it's Matt's day. So Matt's got a vlog up with you and the next part of the diorama build, I do believe. I think it is. Yeah, like I said, just, I've got no idea. We'll yeah, speak to our know. producer for that and he'll yeah. let us know what's yeah. going up when he sends it to me in the morning. Yeah, he's not on today, but yes. He's, yeah, uh, that's I'll speak it. To the producer, director and... Yeah, editor, uh, yeah, that's editor, it. whatever, yeah. That's him. it. So yeah. he, he does everything. Uh, he will sort all of that out, and that'll be up with you. I'll be up with you on Friday. Obviously, got the next part of the Sky Radio will be up with you. But in the meantime, obviously, I'll keep you going as well. I'll get the reviews of these done tomorrow, and those will be up with you tomorrow night as well. And obviously, up to the weekend as well, we'll get those all sorted and done. Mm -hmm. So there we go. Right. I think if we're all done there, Matt, we will call it right there. Thank you very much for joining us as always. It's been a pleasure. We'll see you all again very soon. Happy meltling. Take care and bye. Bye. Bye.